it goes 0 to 60 in a little over 7 seconds. Features a 355 horsepower V8 engine and has enough muscle to tow 3,700 kilos. The Chevy Suburban, an SUV icon and a machine built with a very unique form of localized passion. When we have our motto of a world-class ride built with Texas pride, we as Texans, we take pride in what we do. We feel that we are the greatest state. We were our own country at one point. We all exude the cowboy pride, and that's what we do. There's a saying, I wasn't born in Texas, but I got here as fast as I could. <laughs> People aren't the only ones in a hurry. In the body shop, it takes just over eight hours to build a single exterior shell. Taking the parts from the stamping facilities, we are putting them together, weld them, and we are sipping down to the paint shop. This is where everything starts. You come in here, is nothing, and by the time it leaves out, you've got a full job. But in between, you've got tons of things that happen. Over 1,200 robots hum with activity in the 100,000 square meter facility. The whole system is fully automated. That's where you get a Texas toughness built by the Texas people. I have one of the best American product made roll out of this facility. I like to work in the body shop because we're the first line of defense. If we don't do it right, it's not done right. The facility features an amazing amount of automation. There are over 120 robots just on this line alone, so it's quite a bit of voltage going through here. They start by welding the bottom of the machine together. So Suburban, I see them out on the street, and I'm happy that I see them out on the street because that keeps me working. On a separate line, another set of robots join the inner and outer side panels. The built-up panels then head directly to the main line. Then you put the side frames attached to the roof, and then you put all the swing panels, fenders, hoods, lift gates. Rear quarter panels go on, and a robot swings the lengthy roof into place before the sparks start to really fly. The assembled bodies are placed on sleds in preparation for the paint shop but there's still a little bit more work to be done. Workers add the front quarter panels to the carrier and lift the hood into position. Then on the final line, another set of craftspeople attach the doors to the bare metal body. I am a well checker. I make sure all the wells that the robot wells are holding and keeping the job together. From the smallest boat to the biggest piece to the floor pan, a lot goes into building a car, it's just not one big piece. A lot happens inside these walls. And a lot has happened to the machine itself over the past 80 plus years. The suburban name goes way back. And it's something that means something to people and continues to mean something to people. The suburban story starts in 1935. At the time, the United States has a population of just 127 million people. A US postage stamp costs just three cents. And canned beer goes on sale for the first time. At its introduction, it was really kind of a covered pickup truck. But then as people used it, it became kind of synonymous with utility. The initial machine is extremely bare bones, combining a pickup truck with a station wagon. Little does anyone realize just how profound the concept will become. If you look at all the vehicles that were being put out in the 1930s, you didn't have nearly the range that we have now. You had sedans, you had trucks, and you maybe had some luxury cars. The Suburban was trying a new thing. The austere nature of the machine fits the era. For a long time, it wasn't about hauling people. It was really about being a van for the wilderness or for the farm. Things you had to remember, there was no highway system. There was no interstate. Those didn't come along until the 1950s. Roads in general in the cities were paved, but paved didn't mean the same thing that we think of now. 
The lack of roads isn't the only challenge, so is name recognition. Oddly, at the time, multiple brands used the suburban name to describe their vehicles. You had a Chrysler Suburban, and you had station wagons from Rambler and International that were called Suburbans. A lot of people had the name Suburban at the time. Six years later, the second generation arrives. Just two years after the start of World War II. The Suburban got its start before World War II, but during World War II, it was used extensively by the military as a transport vehicle. Military applications help boost sales in the field and when the GIs return home. When this vehicle was introduced, planes start coming into the American landscape. Trains started becoming much more stylized, and it starts becoming a little bit more of a complete shape. The third generation arrives in 1947 and offers a 216 cubic inch Thriftmaster inline six cylinder engine. So, this was the first of the post war. Uh, truck design, so this was called the Advanced Design Series, but shared its front end sheet metal with the pickup. You can see there's a split windshield. The fenders are growing out. The headlamps now are all part of the fender. You're starting to see this kind of one shape or one form vocabulary grow. These days, bare metal bodies get styled inside an advanced and automated paint shop. We receive the body from the body shop. And then once we get our hands on it, we have to prep it for painting. From start to finish, it takes just six hours to color a new machine. They start from phosphate, and from there, they get coated with a zinc oxide for rust resistance. Bodies head to a ceiling line, where a combination of man and machine guarantee that the shell is completely waterproof. They go through our seal line process, and that's where we have all of our automation. And then we also have a lot of manual operations that do sealing on the actual vehicle. The automated help is the first of over 111 robots found in the paint shop. Something best seen in the primer booth. After that, they go through our color booths. We have three of those here. So they go through base coat, uh, a second layer of the actual base, and then they go through our clear coat. The robots paint fast and furiously. Each head spins up to 60,000 revolutions per minute. The paint applicator spins at a high RPM, and it electrically charges the paint so that the paint adheres to the metal, and we get all the surfaces evenly coated. Next, the vehicle receives its clear coat to protect the base color. When you see the first body coming down, you, you don't expect the truck to be glimmery and shiny. You see the color, the vibrant. I think at that point, you start seeing uh, a little bit of the glimpse of the final product. But once you see the complete product, you're like, I did that. I was a part of the paint. Finally, the body hits the quality control line. We put a little heart in every job that we build, and we want to make sure the customer's there for life. The heartfelt passion doesn't just get instilled into each machine, but also the next generation. I started here as a high school intern. I then went on to work on the floor. I was working nights and going to school. The hours, they were hard. It was 60 to 70 hours sometimes while taking a full load through college. But uh, GM gave me the means to actually go to college. Engineer Norma Gonzalez is one of the company's rising stars. Once I graduated, I became part of the industrial engineering department. And now um, I finally got my own area here in the paint shop. I'm currently going for my master's in lean manufacturing. And GM is going the entire ride with me. And I couldn't be happier, uh, especially with everything that they've done for me. Amazingly, Norma's tail begins just a few miles from the factory floor. 
I literally grew up down the street. I went to college down the street. I enjoy it. You're willing. The opportunities all over. I want to learn as much as I can. And we're at the home of the SUV, the only in the world. So I'm very lucky, very fortunate. So I want to take advantage of that. Some people grow up local. Others are born into tried and true Chevy families. The factory's been here for a long time. So there's a lot of family ties that's grown over the years. And people that worked here initially, now they have kids. And some of those may even have kids. Or so you have a chance to have your kids work here. Family ties that are often full of passion and emotion. My son works here. He's been here about two years. It's pretty exciting. It's been fun to watch him grow and know the things he knows. Choke me up. <laughs> Sometimes he can have a, uh, a soft heart, but uh, you know, I love him. He's my father. Uh, I like working with him, too, and especially being able to see him a lot more often. So It was a shock, because I didn't think anybody wanted to follow my footsteps. And I don't know that he did. But when he got involved with manufacturing, he loved it, and it's a perfect fit. Ever since I was little, me and my dad always liked working on cars. I had a 2000 Silverado. We always liked adding stuff to it. So it kind of got me loving the GM product and wanting to come over and work for General Motors. These days, a whole lot of people want GM's full-sized SUVs. The company builds as many as they can inside of their Arlington, Texas final assembly hall, including the king of the road, the Chevy Suburban. 